Hey guys, welcome back to another Vern's Super Coach video. Uh, it's finally out for everyone, and I am so keen to go through it. Um, look, I haven't done a video in about a month. As I said, I'm not going to do really too many on this off season. I've really been good at staying around from touching my team and changing it constantly. Uh, you know, the temptation's always there to be changing it, but. I just didn't want to be that guy on it every day making adjustments. Uh, saying that, I've stayed up to touch with my uh, YouTube videos, as in, like, I've been watching George, you know, JD, DR, Supercoach, and so all the videos that come out regarding Supercoach, I just have made sure to not touch it and play with it constantly myself. Uh, but obviously, today it's come out, so I jumped on and I actually touched it around. Um, I'll be honest, when I did look at the other team, I wasn't very happy with it. Um, so it was nice to get in and touch a lot of it. Obviously, we've got a lot of changes coming in for this year, which is super cool. Uh, we obviously have the round uh, 13 buy, which is isolated by itself. For those who haven't heard, that will be a best of 18. Now, I know what you're thinking. It's a best of 18. Why don't I have Stuart and Miller in my team already? Uh, I'm actually considering maybe picking them up after their buys, you know? Running maximum premiums on that round, full 18 if I can at that time, and then it's a perfect round to get them the week after uh, when obviously other teams are missing players. You know, that's going to be a great week to get them in, assuming they don't explode early. I, I love Miller. Stewart is been so good as well. Uh, obviously, he's had his ups and downs with missing games last year and never managed to get out 22, but... It's one of those things where I just think this is maybe going to be a bit better overall. It's probably the exact opposite of everyone. Everyone's starting them because they want them to play every single buy round. You know what? They technically have the second buy. As long as your first buy is okay, there really shouldn't be a problem. Then bring these two in after the second buy. Look, it is getting a bit towards the end of the season at that point. Obviously, the halfway point, a lot of people are going to be wanting to make a lot of upgrades by then. And you're probably going to be wanting players like that in your team. But I think if you're patient, you can really capitalize on getting them in at a much more optimal time in the year. So that's why I don't actually have them here. Uh, as I said, a bit contradictory to a lot of other people's opinions. Um, what I do want to talk about here is obviously you can see the team. I've made a bit of changes. I've thrown Doherty in there instead. I've thrown Sicily in there instead. Um, really, it's just the certainty here. I don't see Sicily's role changing at the end of the day, and he has been playing. He played every single game last season, and he was phenomenal. Hawthorne's not really going to change as a team. I don't see him really changing. Um, I mean, there's always natural regression that sometimes does happen, but it. I don't think it's going to be really too different from what he did this year. So uh, really keen to have him in there uh, and just playing a 22 games with good scores. Doherty, obviously a bit more questionable on... Will he play all 22? I believe he did all 22 last year. Um, so that was obviously awesome from him. Uh, we obviously, he has, you know, he has his problems with uh, his chemo and whatnot as to why he has missed games here and there. Uh, we can see all 22 there. And he did obviously get injured um, before any of that happened. So he had a terrible run at it, but he got 22 in last season. Uh, we obviously saw him go into the mid towards the end of the season when Carlton were lacking in midfielders. And he did really well there as well. So I, I, I'm happy with him as a defender. I'm happy with him as a midfielder. I think Doki is just going to be a solid pick overall. So that's why I've sort of slipped him in instead. Obviously, we have the uncertainty of Sinclair's role. Um, and with Stuart, honestly, I expect him to perform really well. As I said, buys are the reason why. Which, look, you don't want to pick your team around buys. I've done that for the last two years. And it just hasn't really worked out playing too much around the buys. Um... Dawson, I think everyone's got. I decided to bring... I don't know if I had Bose actually in the last video. I did put him out for a little bit. As I said, I did touch my team a little bit. Um, but he's in there now. I think he's a bit of a bargain buy, and that's why I sort of got him there. Uh, we brought in Bont because, as we know, there's going to be more midfield available in the dogs with Dunkley leaving. And we all think Bont's definitely going to get those minutes. Uh, I wanted... I did have Bailey Smith here, but we did hear that... Uh, I, I don't think he was in full training uh, when he first came back. Um, I, I did, did feel like I heard that. So I feel like moving to Bont's actually also just way safer because at the end of the day, Bont's been mental. Last year, he didn't drop below the ton much at all. He was going crazy all year just with consistency. So even if we have a look at just last year, obviously it doesn't mean he's going to do it again this year, but he dropped down once below the ton, another time, another time. That's three times under 100. Talk about consistent. That's actually insane. Like, 
that's mental. And this man spent a lot of time in the forward line, and he was the top six mid or you know, overall, like, that's just so good, so, assuming he's gonna have uptime on his mid, like, I, I don't see how he isn't actually a bit of a bargain buy at his price, so that's why he slipped in there, Steel, we also heard he's not at full training, but he's just at, once again, such a steal of a price, so we've got him there, <laughs> uh, and then Green in here, uh, Green, obviously, Hopper, Toronto, leaving, a lot more midfield available, uh, and he really was, it really was a, towards his breakout year last year, he really did step up his game, and I wouldn't be surprised if he took it to the next level this year. So we have a lot of mid, you know, mid prices in the midfield just with Steel Green Mitchell, and obviously they're not quite mid prices. But compared to the big dogs that we see, um, they're, they're not the top eight keepers that you usually want. But I think they all have potential to do it. And we saw last year that it wasn't about picking the top eight; it was about getting those value buys and maximizing cash. So I'm very happy to have Mitchell's in here, as I think he could be there. I think Green has potential, and if Steele gets back to what he used to be, uh, you know, there's no doubt that he would be up there. So I believe what 2021 season? What did he finish his price at? Okay, no, he butchered his price then. What was his starting price last season? Um, so his starting price was 604k. Oh, crazy, which he's... Is that this season? No, that's last season. Oh, did I, I scrolled too far down? Yeah, I scrolled too far down. That, that wasn't right, yeah. 685, so he's 80k off from his best, and we know he can get there. Even if he doesn't, I couldn't see him doing any worse than what he did this year, which was still... You know, it, it's still a perfectly fine M8, so I'm happy to have him there. In the meantime, I uh, didn't really touch the rocks. They're just how they were last time. And then, obviously, Dunkley, Taranto. I've got Flanders in there because George is all about Flanders. And, you know, I, I just had the extra cash at the moment. I was looking for someone. I had, you know, 263k or whatever it was. And I was like, oh, I guess, whatever. I might as well just slip him on in. There's no problem there. I've always got Bruce and King. I don't know if they're going to stay there, obviously. I think King's a bit more of a worry than Bruce. Uh, I think if he gets a bit of a backline role, that could actually be much better for his super coach and then we have mclean so not too much of a change really just around that midfield at the end of the day and a little bit in the back line now structure wise what my plan here is you can probably already see it is going light in the forward line and i talked about this last year but we have the dpps coming in on round six we don't quite know who could swing down but last year there was basically the entire forward line top six players were made up of midfielders like, you know, Bailey Smith was down there, Bontempelli was down there, uh, Caniglio was down there, Libertori was down there. You know, it was made up of midfielders who got a bit of forward time early on in the season, got that forward DPP role, and then just ended up being the, be you know, the best playing super coach forwards in the league. So that's why I'm going light in the forward line, because I want to wait for these midfielders, even if they're not, you know, even if we just take a cheeky look at... um. Where is it? I don't even know how to bring up players right now. What is going on? Here we go, players. Sorry, a little bit of a different set of guys. Bear with me. Um, past seasons. Let's jump to last season. So even if we look at last season's forwards, just quickly here, um, look at the price. Like, these guys, price-wise, are nothing compared to the midfielders. Like, if... if I mean, I think I actually wanted to look at 2023 more than anything, but I guess it's a similar thing. You, you get what I'm saying here. Basically, price-wise, the, the forward players are nothing. You know, these, these premiums are nothing. These averages are nothing. Even if you compare them to players that are outside the very top-tier mids, or even if you're moving into this, you know, second tier of mids, where you have Libertore, you have Luke Parker... If any of these guys slip in that forward DPP at any point in time, they're instantly basically top six, and you just have to slip them into your team. So I'm leaving myself light in the forward line in anticipation of these guys potentially slipping in later on in the year. Obviously, if they don't, that's perfectly fine too. I'm very happy with how the structure's looking here, how the players are looking, what we've got the... I would consider this five premiums here, three in the back, one here, and then two here. So 11 premiums in total. I know a lot more people are happy with the run 12, 13, and a lot of these are sort of mid pricey. I do have a lot of mid prices in there as well, which, you know, it could be a bit crazy. Um, but I'm happy with how it's looking, and I think this is I think this is the right angle to go for. I don't want to be caught with um, players that are looking like they're on the cusp of a top 
six forward position, and then we have the DPP changes come in, and they slip down to tenth or so in the you know in the forward line. Much better just to keep the forward line fresh. There's plenty of good players down there, or rookies to sort of play with, and then bring in the DPP midfielders later on when they come on through. So uh, there's no harm in waiting and just doing it later on. I think I've used my money efficiently elsewise, so I'm perfectly happy with this. So look, that's how the team's looking, guys. I'm super excited for it. I know you all are too. You know, 50 days left. I mean, if you're watching this video, clearly you're as excited as I am. Uh, tell me how your team's going. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you're looking at because, uh, yeah, there's just there's so much uh, there's just so much to be excited for. And um, look, I, as I said, not going to do too many videos on this off season. Next one you may not see until. You know, another month's time, we get a bit more of an update, a bit more news, um, maybe even longer than that, depending on what happens um, with Amy series and whatnot. But I'll, I'll try and do, I think, one towards the end, the end of the month in February, just to, you know, keep up to date with any team updates. Uh, I mean, if there's not even a team update, I might just jump on and talk about, you know, footy updates in general. Maybe it didn't affect my team, but things to consider. Um, but that's what I'm looking at the moment, guys. Uh, yeah, as I said, tell me what you think. Um, but till then, I'll catch you next time. Peace later.